The ERA 100 will replace the existing Sonos One, while the ERA 300 is a new product and it includes spatial audio format Dolby Atmos. I asked Sonos CEO Patrick Spence and record producer and Sonos consultant Giles Martin about why the 100 doesn't include Atmos as well. The system is based around its size, its form factor, its usage, and also the number of transducers. Um, I don't believe that if we, you know, the Aero 100 is a stereo product at higher frequencies, has two tweeters and a woofer, two opposing tweeters. That's not a spatial audio product. For a spatial audio, you have to have discrete audio that fires in different directions. There's no point putting a badge on something for the sake of it and going, look, it's like you never heard it before. It's because, because people know there's an honesty to what we do and people know when they get home and they listen to the product, this is what it does. And the tricky thing about sound is everyone talks about it in the same way, but you have to listen to it, obviously. It's like, you know, it's like smell or anything like that. And so when what's been really fun the next, last couple of days is showing off the products and people actually really realizing, okay, this, Era 100, I understand that one was a mono speaker, this now does stereo, I can hear it doing stereo. Era 300, this, I can feel, a sp this is what spatial audio is. Wow, I actually, this is really interesting. And you can talk about it, but people have to listen to it. And so I think that just by badging a product, um, which would be the case with a smaller unit that doesn't have that many drivers, I think would be the wrong thing to do. I think spatial audio is the, the biggest advance we've had in sound in a very, very long time. I'd compare it to go from mono to, mono to stereo. It makes sense because we don't listen in, uh, in a flat plane, we listen in a three-dimensional space. And now with the technology we're developing, you can recreate that three-dimensional space in your home, which means the creators can now create music mixes that are truly enveloping or more intimate or more elaborate or just more natural and real. Um, that's for me as a creator and part of um, the sound team at Sonos. It's super exciting that we're pushing these boundaries. For me, I think it's really about going from hearing the music to giving, giving a technology to creators that enable people to help their fans feel the music and really feel all the dimensions of music. And I think that's the unique opportunity with Spatial. And we're just in the early days of it. I think recording engineers and artists are learning how to use the technology to deliver that immersive experience Giles talked about um, into the home. And that's why we're so excited about the Era 300. Well, we're launching a, we're launching a Spatial Audio product which we really believe in. And so I, the stereo won't go away. Um, and, 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 and stereo is great, and listen, mono is great, you know, and we build mono products as well. I mean, you know, Move and Roam are mono speakers. But we believe that great sound experience is the key behind what we do, and if you can bring that to people, and what's, what's fun about what we do, and I also work obviously in the creative community as well, is being able to show artists what you can do now with technology advances that then makes them go, we want to make music that will sound great for this, format and it's a it's a circular thing and you know we've been going in a circle of stereo for a long time and and spatial audio has existed but finally you know with with advanced codecs and now with advanced products you can th th that dream has become a realization so yeah it's 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 part of our portfolio and will continue to be it yeah and I, and I think it's you know when we went from mono to stereo you know when that happened mid-century last last century that took a while, right? And so it didn't happen overnight. Um, it took creators really embracing the technology, artists like leveraging the most of it, and a transition time for people to get comfortable with it. And we don't want to force that, but we want to celebrate it. And that's what Era 300 does, is really celebrate what's possible with spatial audio for music specifically. And we also want to keep you know, being able to address those that want to listen to music in stereo as well. And so it's an opportunity for people to really choose what, the way that they want to enjoy the music. And, uh, to provide creators a platform that enable them to make it the way they want to make it. It, it was interesting about when, when, we, when we made one and, and, and play one, we didn't think about it as being a, a, no. a speaker that was adopting an arch a professional architectural spaces or that, but it has been, and it's a really, really good product for that. Again, with Era, Era 100, we're thinking about the home, but then we realized that it's going to be used in those spaces, and absolutely, it's a great sounding product. And, and you know, you and I were joking earlier about how it's really important not to make an irritating sounding speaker. You know, walk to a restaurant or a cafe and I know there's a Sonos One playing in there because it's sort of, it's, it's not like, will someone turn that music off? We really try and 
throw ourselves into building products that are musical that you want to listen to. I mean, it's the it's the key. I mean, why not? You know, why not make you know you want to sort of hype things and make things impressive. So I think yes, Era 100 will suit those spaces because it is a great sounding product and it's not irritating. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very good slogan, but yeah, I'm going to run with that for a bit. <laughs> the biggest reaction. I, I think it's been the emotion of particularly artists and recording engineers that haven't heard their music displayed quite like that, like coming through in that particular way, and the the level of thanks and emotional impact that it's had, and that, that's when we knew we were on to something special. And so the product's being used in recording studios for people to listen to their mixes, and I think that is where you see the magic actually happen, and where we, you know, and, and that gives me the confidence to believe that this is the right product to bring spatial audio out loud listening to millions of new homes. And so it is, it is that moment for the people who make music and, and are able to deliver sound that people feel. And, and there hasn't been a time where I haven't shown an artist a product and they haven't said, you know, can I have one? You know, which is, I think is the, is the best sign. I mean, that and, you know, we were in, we were in Republic um, Studios uh, in October and September, working with teams of engineers on the product, with mix engineers, and I said to one of the guys, I said, it's funny, isn't it, we do these Atmos mixes, and then like someone says to you, your wife or, or whoever will say, you know, what have you done today? And you can't go, well, I can't play it to you. Uh, it's, it sounds really good back in my room. And, I, and I, so I said to these guys, I said, we know you, would you play this to your mates? Like, if you did a mix, he goes, yeah, absolutely. And that was kind of like, great. And you know, they, you, know you work with people and, and they are like, um, Nigel Godrich, who is a good friend, he works with Sonos on the soundboard, he has public de derided spatial audio, okay, was in Abbey Road with me and I played him, we were actually working on Era 100 together, and I played him 300, he goes, this sounds amazing. I went, well Nigel, that's an Atmos mix I did on Era 300, he went, can I have one? <laughs> And I was like, I thought you didn't like it. And he goes, no, this sounds great. And that's the thing. It's like, it's based on experience. And I think that'll be the success of Spatial Audio because I think there has been bad experiences in the past. And that's the tricky thing is navigating through that. But I think all you, you know, if you build it, they will come. If you, if you build a good experience, then people, people hear it. <laughs> well, right now, I mean, there's been a massive sea change within the industry. Um, I've noticed it from our point of view. One of my roles at Universal has been overseeing the Atmos Mix program. So, you know, we, and what's interesting is that the Abbey Road penthouse was used constantly because Abbey Road engineers were mixing other people's music. What's happened now is they're not used as much because people are mixing their own music in Atmos and they have Atmos studios there. And so it's like 90% of releases now are in Dolby Atmos, I think. Yeah. So that's. If that's not the question, so it's a continuous thing, and then there's catalog. And you know, I've been asked to mix everything from Def Leppard to In Excess to Beatles, Rolling Stones, Beach Boys. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I have to listen to this stuff, and I go, God, I wouldn't. I'd much rather listen to other people's mixes. Um, I don't know. The, the, the Kick album, the NXS yeah. Kick album is good, a good, a good fun. And you know, being an Aussie, you'd understand that. <laughs> but also having, I think, with the NXS Kick album, you know, for me, having listened to it you know, at a very formative time in my life and having listened to it over and over again, to then hear it in a different way is pretty darn special. But I will say there's that. And, and so often in the industry, we turn to a comparison of listening to, well, what did it sound like, you know, in mm. stereo or mono versus at most the real thing is that Phineas track that you heard that has been built in a way that understands what spatial audio is all about. And so the new music that's coming out and the, the artists that are now using the technology to create new music in all its glory of spatial audio is something that uh, is just blowing me away. And I, and I think that's gonna be the really fun part as opposed to how do we compare old tracks and old catalog yeah. and what that sounds and, like. And that's right? why it's really super fun like to, you know, we see like a hundred products in studios where you know what you're, you know what people are, you know what been listening to. Okay, I'm gonna put this guitar over here. And I mean, to answer your question that of impact, I was with a, an old guy at, in, at CES in Vegas. I found myself, and he was the, he was the person who re, has remixed all. He does. He was Tom Petty's producer engineer. And he remixed all the Tom Petty stuff, and I said, "I've got this. We, we, we made Sonos. We made this box that is truly amazing." And he was like, looking at me suspiciously. I mean, no, it is. I said, "You come, you know, you should come and listen to it." And he came to my suite, and he like he listened to a mix he'd done, a Tom Petty mix. He's a good engineer. And he was like. Oh man, because the guitar, and he ran over to the other side. They're in the, the guitars are over here. It was like a kid. It was, and it was just like that is great. And that then, that then, if you.
give people these products or, or give creators these products, they go, I want to make something that can do that. You know, the, the ultimate is that the artists get to reach the fans in a way that they've not been able to before and put them in the middle of the music. And that is what our great hope was in creating the Era 300. And that is what uh, we can't wait for customers to actually hear.